Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining my talk about technical documentation. How can I write them better and why should I care? And when I say I, I of course also mean you. But first of all, hi, my name is Hila Fish. I'm a senior DevOps engineer. I have 15 years of experience in the tech industry. I'm a firm believer in uh, communities and that's why I'm part of AWS Community uh, Builders Program. And uh, recently I've also got recognized as HashiCorp Ambassador because I talk about Terraform quite a lot. I'm a co-organizer of DevOps Days Tel Aviv, which is, if I'm not mistaken, the largest DevOps Days event in the entire world. I'm a mentor in courses and communities. I'm a DevOps culture fan. I think this is what helps companies achieve great things. And in my spare time, I'm a lead singer in, in a cover band, as you can see in this picture, with the, which is a lot of fun. Okay, so I believe that anyone can and should write technical documents because, for example, and I will give lots of examples uh, later on, but Let's take this example for now. In the middle of the night, when I have an alert uh, that production something happened in production, and it's middle of the night and I need to fix something, I really don't care if the runbook that I found uh, to help me fix the issue, if the English in that runbook is fabulous or a broken English. I really don't care. As long as the runbook is helpful and what I read is useful and concise and clear, this is all I care about. So knowledge is what matters here so if you have the knowledge please share it forward it will help you the future you in which i will cover in a bit and everyone so if you have the knowledge please share it forward again doesn't matter if you have broken english fabulous one just share the knowledge and i also like to say that if you can't automate it then document it and a lot of things that you can write in your day-to-day -day can be considered as technical documents so the first straightforward one is a system logical design or a brief which is pretty straightforward because you need to uh, document the system and what it's what it is all about but also on call run books as i mentioned uh, on my on the f uh, previous slide uh, to help me fix any issues code read means to explain a uh, spaghetti code to explain functionality of uh, this function or another so this could also be a technical document even onboarding docs uh, documents to help new members uh, uh, get onboarded to the team and that way uh, they can help themselves and self-service themselves in all, in, instead of having a body uh, to accompany accompany them and teach them what they need they can just use onboarding documents a Slack pin messages. If you have the knowledge and you can uh, write something in a Slack message that everyone can use uh, daily, then do it and pin it in, in that channel and then, then everyone can use it and that's awesome. And even project planning doc, once you manage a, a big a pro a project, you can have the planning in a document and then it is a technical document to, uh, for everything because it can cover a lot of things. So. This is something that I usually say uh, when I'm standing in front of people and then I like to say, hey, if you ever heard this sentence before or said this sentence before, please raise your hand. And then I see a lot of people raising their hands because a lot of people think or say that their code is self-documented. Some even say that just read the code and understand what it is about. The code tells a story. It's never the case, okay? Nah. So, uh, that's the thing. I believe that you should always have documentation because we need to document a lot of things, not only functionality, but also intentions, reasoning, why we, did we do this or not that, and I will cover it uh, in the next slide. So why should you write uh, technical documents? If I haven't convinced you until now, that is. Uh, so here are some more reasons why to write uh, technical documents. The first of all, to reduce your work volume. And then you can say, wait, reduce work volume, because if I sit down and spend two hours of my time investing in writing a document, it uh, uh, extends my work volume, doesn't reduce it, right? So I'll give you an example to emphasize what I mean. So in my previous job, uh, since I'm a DevOps engineer, I got approached by a lot of people, uh, Dev, QA, all of these sorts, and they asked me several questions. Why the pod in Kubernetes is red? What do I do about it? What is this error? in the CI that I'm deploying and stuff like that. And then I noticed that a lot of the questions that they ask got repeated and, and I can actually uh, just write a document, deliver this document to them and then help them help themselves. So that's exactly what I did. I've written a document and I called it tips and tricks by DevOps. 
And then people, uh, I delivered to them in Zoom, uh, go over uh, one by one. Of course, I had a table of contents so they can go to the direct thing that they uh, care about at that uh, point in time. And that's why people now have a procedure to follow instead of uh, bugging me. Uh, of course, it's not bugging because I really like to help, but since the questions were repeatable, then it was really uh, not necessary for me to answer it all over again. So now they had a procedure and it was self-service, okay, and which is my next point. And they could help themselves and I'm no longer a bottleneck for them because they can solve their own issues. Which leads me to the next point, self-service enablement and to increase their velocity. So the document that I mentioned before is that and uh, I forgot to say that this is how it reduced my work volume because before the document I got approached like a seven or eight times a day, something like that. And after I released this document for them, I got approached only one or two times a day, which was awesome. And in the long run, it reduced my work volume. So in coupled with that self-service enablement, enablement, so the doc is uh, one example. Other docs, I had a migration that I did uh, for GitLab and I'm gonna probably mention this uh, migration quite a bit because it gave me a lot of um, pointers for this uh, presentation. So, uh, I did a migration and I created a document for them to adopt GitLab faster. Yeah, they can find online uh, some materials, but I narrowed it down to what they care about. And also it was a means for me to show them that I that my team is the owner for that uh, system and they could approach us whenever they need it. So after we released this project, it, this uh, document, Dev could adopt it faster, and then they had self-service. They could just use GitLab, and they didn't need me. And eventually, it also increased their dev velocity. So this is one example. Onboarding docs is another example of self-service because that way they can onboard themselves, and they don't need someone to be with them. Any docs of troubleshooting is also good for that. And even Slack bots that help with q and it's something that you can set up and then people can help, help themselves instead of waiting for other people to help them. Eliminate production incidents quicker. So the on-call runbooks that I mentioned before, it could help you and others uh, when having an issue, decrease MTTR, mean time to resolution, and help the company meet SLAs and also help you get back to sleep uh, faster. Another reason why to write a technical document, because it will avoid a single point of failure or a bottleneck, which is you. Because I will ask you this rhetorical question, do you want to go on vacation and still be available for work calls? Or do you want to go on vacation with a clear head? So I would say it here, job security is dead. And hey, a lot of people say that AI will take our jobs anyway, so let's try to prevent it and fight with it with uh, knowledge sharing. So please share the knowledge. Uh, another reason is that it will help make things clear for you or the future you because once you structure things and write them down in a clear manner, it will organize it in your mind as well. And also it will cover a lot of things that you can't really know until you read about it, like intentions, reasoning, anything that is not straightforward. It will help you manage the systems, cut, uh, defend decisions that you are taking, etc. Visibility. It will attract focus to the things that you do at work, which in turn will help you progress your career. And also it will help you communicate things to your managers. It will uh, uh, convey the extent of your work and the fact that you are a team player and really a team player, not just some slogan that you write on your CV. And last but not least, it will help you understand why are we doing things in a certain way. In the GitLab migration that I uh, mentioned before, I explained why the certificates are set here and how to renew them. Uh, in Terraform, I uh, explained in the README why the model that I've written is complex. Why couldn't I go with a community model or couldn't do the model uh, more simple? Um, and other uh, general things like why did we chose to do things X instead of following clean code practices like dry and kiss, for example. So. Writing the documents uh, will help us understand why are we doing the things that we are doing in a certain way. It will help us defend the decisions that we are taking and to com communicate them to others. And also it will develop your business mindset and will make you a better engineer because always asking why, which is something that you need when you write documents because we need to explain why this, when, why that, and to have a certain flow. So always asking why will result you in striving for the best uh, solution or implementation possible. 
So I hope that I convinced you until now that it's very important to write technical documents and to help you in various ways. So let's now understand how to write technical documents without being a technical writer. You don't have to be a technical writer, but there is a process that you can follow that will help you write technical documents. So let's start. First of all, you need to know your audience. Uh, based on your audience, you will know what needs to be covered and to which extent. And this is your time to plan and write in bullet points what you're going to cover in your document. If you can uh, uh, write it not only in bullet points, but really cover it in, uh, at the moment, because, you know, once we're doing things, it is still fresh in our minds. So if you can cover it during uh, the, the work, this is awesome. If not, at least cover it in uh, bullet points so you can get back to it later and fill it, fill it in later. So know your audience, a uh, internal use, a uh, audience for internal use like system design or uh, external audience like API documentation and stuff like that. What should you write about uh, when it comes to internal use for maintenance, for example? So things you worked on while working on them. Again, as I mentioned before, bullet points is only if you don't have the time to write uh, during the work. But if you do have the time, write it down because we remember things better when they are fresh in our minds. So document these parts now as much as possible. And if you can't, at least uh, do the uh, bullet points. Uh, things that bugged you, so people, uh, so other people won't run into them uh, as well. For example, when I did a GitLab migration, I opened several tickets to support, and then I had ping pong between me and them. I opened the ticket two or three days later, they said, please send, send me logs. And then I noticed that the, the way to send logs is always the same. They have the CLI that you run the command, and then it uh, it collects all the logs for you. So next time that I opened a new uh, support ticket, I opened the support ticket with the logs uh, inside. And that way I prevented the, the ping pong between the, me and them. And I also covered how to do it. I op I've written about the, the CLI command to run in the document. And that way I told them, anyone that read the, the document, I, I, I wrote that if you need to open a ticket, please collect the logs up front because they will ask it for you and then you will prevent the ping pong. So anything that bugged you and you can prevent other people from uh, running into them as well is good. And things that aren't clear or straightforward, uh, another example from GitLab. So I used during the implementation, I used a different a GitLab DB version than the default one. Why did I choose to do that? There was a, a reason. And if I am not documenting the reason, People will think that it was a mistake or it's something that I didn't notice or things got progressed and it was relevant to then and not for now, but actually it was relevant for future versions as well. That's exactly what I did it because GitLab wrote that this version is supported for future versions as opposed to the version they put as default now. So it's very important to document this and other things like that as well, because it will help you defend the decisions and help explain things to other people as well. And also if the code is not clear, explain the flow with describing actual functions. What do I write about when it comes to external use, like users or consumers? So you write what it is about, possible use cases and quick start, any quirks, issues, and things to consider when using this X, and examples, both simple and complex, to help the user adopt whatever you are writing about. Next phase is decide or abide upon a documentation type. So whether you have a docs in a knowledge base like Confluence or any tool that you are using, or maybe you can uh, convince your team, convince your department, your organization to move to docs as code. I will cover it more in a bit, but in general, docs as code is basically a, a way to interact with documents in your IDE. Docs are fully integrated into the dev tool chain and you don't need to leave the ID in order to write uh, documents. So if you need to just abide upon the documentation type, like uh, in a knowledge base, uh, then okay. But if you can decide to move to docs as code, it's much more uh, preferred and I will explain more in a bit. Some general content guidelines when you write uh, documents. So first of all, have a table of contents. It is essential for content discovery. And why is that? Because of the user flow. This is the user flow, the reader flow. And I actually read an article from 1997 that said that people don't read, they scan. And this is exactly the flow that was relevant then and is also re relevant now. 
uh, user searches for something, and that's why you should have meaningful titles and subheadings. Then they scan the, the results and the documents to see if they found whatever they needed. If so, they get the result. If not, if not then they will navigate elsewhere. So that's why you should have links, links, links uh, to read more or different documents that will be more useful. And you can think about uh, that in terms of microservices. So each microservice stands on its own, but they can communicate with other uh, microservices, right? So that's exactly the same for documents. You write about specific thing, like, uh, and I will cover it in a bit. You write it about specific thing in this document, and then if you want to read more or, or link to something else, you link to another document, and that way they each document stands on its own, but you can link to other documents, and it will be helpful to see the entire big picture. Uh, use bold, like highlights in general, but bold in, uh, specifically uh, because people skim through and scan docs and not reading them to the fullest, so help them do that. And in terms of colors, using colors, it it could be a bit controversial because some people are colorblind and stuff like that. But in my experience, I did notice that once um, I use colors, then people just uh, are now more... Uh, attuned to what I'm reading, right, what I'm writing. So for example, if I, I write in red something, then they are bewaring of that and they are more careful. So if you can use colors, I also uh, recommend to uh, utilize that as well. In terms of words and sentences, use short words and more sentences rather than longer words and fewer sentences, because again, it will help people skim through the document and find whatever they are looking for much more quickly. And simple English, okay? Don't try to be Shakespeare. Just, just don't. Write simple American English that non-English speakers can easily understand. Docs as code. Let's cover this uh, concept. So first of all, the documents are written in Markdown, which is awesome because you have table of contents that you can utilize and also highlight and even colors. The text is plain text, so it is human readable. It is easy to write in a diff, and also it is platform agnostic, so you can integrate it wherever you want to, and that's pretty much awesome because it doesn't matter where you are, you can integrate it uh, there. Also, the document is in the same code repo, so the docs are integrated in the dev tool chain, and there's no need to leave the IDE, which is something that is very um, happy for the developers. They don't like to leave the, their IDEs, so they can still be there and write documents. PR review, so you can check if the doc document that you have written or others have written are in a high quality state and if the document even exists. And if the document doesn't exist, then the PR will fail emerging, for example. And also you can do CI CD for documents. You can check for validations and that there are no broken uh, links and linters. Um, I, I put some uh, two tools that I know about. I haven't used them myself, but I just saw uh, some demos and they look very promising. So DocuSowers, which helps you to push code to front end to see the docs in a UI or portal um, and do docs versioning and stuff like that. And Swim has really, I can't, a lot of features, only from the demo model that I've seen, a lot of features. So you can uh, check these uh, tools out and I'm sure they will help you, but I'm sure that there are other tools that can help you with CICD and other tools that really help you uh, make documentation an easy thing in your day-to-day -day and not something painful. And also in, on the right, you can find a, a, um, a quote from Google Style uh, Guide. Docs uh, thrive when they are treated like tests. A necessary chore one learns to savor because it rewards over time. And that's exactly it. If you incorporate tests and validations, then the chore of making a documentation up to date will be very, very easy and, and uh, something that could be feasible in your day to day. Next phase, remember your audience. So you said, you remember what I said that you need to know your audience. Now you need to remember them and have the user flow in mind in and between sections and to write the document order from the most used to the rarely used. So the GitLab document that I've written, I started out with how to upgrade because GitLab released versions every month. So this is probably the thing that they will do the most. Then certificates, because certificates you need to renew like once in two years, something like that. And then integrations, we had integrations with G Jenkins, with Jira. So integrations is something that you do only uh, once you deploy the system. So that's why it's an, a, at the end. And of course, I also put the, uh, the thing with the support to prevent the ping pong and stuff like that. So from the most used to the rarely used because 
I want to send back the user, the, the person that reads the, the document, back to their task as soon as possible. Remember your audience, okay? So concept versus tasks. You need to think about what your audience wants. And if they want to know something, concepts, then write about information, background, explanations, reasoning, intentions, stuff like that. But if they want to do something, tasks, then write a how-to. And please don't confuse uh, between the two, concepts versus task, and put the same, both of them in the same document because they want to, in, in a certain point of time, they want to do only one thing, know something or do something. So write only the know or the do in that uh, document. And then in the document, put a link to the other uh, type of document for them to know. So if they want to do something, write the how-to. And then at the end, here's a link to... Uh, uh, more information about the system can be found here and then, then you put uh, the link and then it will help our users find what they need quickly. A uh, last phase uh, of writing a document is to share it with others, a, a feedback loop. So uh, why is it important? Because what's straightforward for us is not necessarily the case for our readers. So we really need to, uh, and you know, we, we are writing this document for others to, to help them. So you need to uh, give them the document and see if they have any feedback, like if this is uh, clear or not. Maybe you've uh, used like uh, initials that are not really something that everyone knows about and you need to explain it, for example. So anything that you uh, they can uh, share with you to help the document be more uh, clear. And also maybe you think something is straightforward, but then they ask questions like, wait, what, what about this? What about that? And then you can add it to the document as well. So feedback loop, send it to a few readers, like the, the target audience, see what they have to say, iterate it a couple of times to add whatever uh, you need to add, and then basically the document uh, is done. And I've, uh, I told you that this uh, talk is for you to write technical documents without being a technical writer, but if you do want to perfect your English, if you do write, want to write a um, a document in a high quality state English wise, then I've gathered some uh, writing tips uh, by technical writer Joshua Schulgasser, a colleague of mine from work, and by myself. And so you can cover this, uh, go to, to this uh, document and uh, adopt these tips as well. I'm going to also add some tips uh, on the go that will help you uh, in, in the journey of writing a technical documentation. So basically, that's it. Uh, and you can say that, hey, I'm not a technical writer, and you said a lot of things here, I'm not sure I get it all, and you spoke quickly at times. So at least take this good golden rule with you uh, in heart. Provide readers with information they need and send them back to their task as soon as possible. Documentation should always be clear, simple, and to the point. And remember, what you write is very useful and helpful as long as it is uh, concise and clear. And also try to take... Um, the things and the, um, uh, the emphasis that, I, that I've gathered, that I conveyed here throughout this talk with you. But, they, but basically, this is it. They need to get back to their task uh, as soon as possible. And the tip for managers uh, among you uh, is actually not only man uh, managers, but, but uh, bear with me in a sec. So if you want to make sure documentation is integral part of the task and you don't have any CI CD set up in the, at the moment, no PR um, um, guardrails to make sure that if the quality, if the doc quality or the doc is really existing, then the PR will fail to merge. If you don't have any, any of this, but you still want to make sure that documentation is integral part of the task, then uh, define the task definition of done that once the documentation was added, then the task can be closed. And that way you make sure that the documentation is part of the day-to-day. -day. And I said, it's not only for managers, why is that? Because if you listen to uh, what I said here throughout this presentation and you now believe, or you all already believed that documentation is really something that you should uh, invest in, then you can ask your uh, team leader to let you have two more hours or whatever time that you need in order to really uh, write things down end to end. And believe me, I'm sure that if you will ask it, your team leader will be uh, very appreciative of that and they will let you do it. So if you can do it and uh, it will be awesome and everyone will benefit from it. 
So I really hope that after this presentation, uh, you will write, docu uh, write documentation and you can say that your code is now well documented and you will embrace, and I really hope that you will embrace the tips and method methodologies that I gave you here and um, embrace documentation and maintain it. So you'll be able to say uh, this sentence. So thank you so much. I really hope that you enjoyed this uh, presentation and it will it was helpful for you. If you have any questions about technical documentation, uh, DevOps, SRE, stuff like that, uh, you're more than welcome to follow me or reach out through uh, LinkedIn, uh, which is the QR code, uh, mail or Twitter, and I'll be happy to help. Thank you very much.